I'm Adrienne Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, what we're going to be talking about is your superpower. The reason that I want to talk about your superpower is because these things come up in our coaching calls all the time where, and I've thought these things to myself as well, I'm no different, that where we think to ourselves, you know, oh, everybody has this quality that I don't have, or I have this quality that isn't a good quality. And one of the qualities that came up or characteristics that came up is overthinking. And I want to talk about this characteristic of overthinking and why I think it is a superpower and it is not a weakness to anybody's character or to anybody's personality and who you are and how you think. I think that being an overthinker or overanalyzer gets a really bad rap. And, you know, people are put down for overthinking. You know, people are put down sometimes professionally, certainly in their personal lives for overthinking. You know, have you ever heard somebody say, oh, you're overthinking that or you're overanalyzing that or why are you overthinking that? Just let it go. Things like that. And I think that it's really important to reframe that because it's not a bad thing to be an overanalyzer or somebody who who overthinks something because that's just the way your brain works. Like I would consider myself an overanalyzer, but it's part of who I am. And it's the reason that I do the things that I do and that I can do the things that I do. And that I think through every single microscopic layer of every single decision that we make. And I think what I always say and what I've said in our coaching calls is like, just use the superpower for good and not for evil, (laughs) right? Like if you are an overthinker or an overanalyzer, like let's talk about that and let's see how you're using that skill because it's absolutely a skill. Some people can't think about things as deeply as they want to, But people who can or who learn to do that, it's absolutely a skill. You can learn to think more deeply, absolutely. And, but people who do are often, you know, judged because of it. And I want to reframe that for us. And so the way that we're going to do that is by, you know, defining overthinking and overanalyzing and then moving into a little conversation about how we can use it for good, how we can use it for good. And so, Let's start overthinking or overanalyzing, in my opinion, is the ability to think about your decisions, your choices, things that happen in the world at multiple layers, sometimes microscopically at multiple layers. And I think that this is a really important thing for human beings to do because it allows us to understand not only other people's perspectives, but also the consequences and implications of our decisions. And so when we're thinking about overanalyzing or overthinking, and I think like, actually, I think I'm overthinking and overanalyzing the concepts of overthinking and overanalyzing in this podcast episode, (laughs) but like, oh, well, let's, let's do it. And I think that the ability to analyze at such a deep level and really be able to unpack and sort out the different things happening at those different levels is integral to your success. And so whether it's relationships, whether it's what somebody said to you, which is often what people overthink, whether it's overthinking a decision that you made and whether it's right or wrong, whether it's overthinking, you know, an opportunity that you're, that you may have, have access to, or that you may pursue. There are lots of layers to all of that. And they 
all of these choices that you have could dictate the rest of your life. And that may sound like a little bit exaggerated, but I think that it's true. Like choices that we're making always move us. I always say one of two or three things, depending on the mood I'm in. One, they move us closer to the goal that we have, closer to that life beyond our wildest dreams. Two, they keep us stagnant. And three, they move us further away from our goals and our life that we are building beyond our wildest dreams. And the reason that I clump two and three together is because in my opinion, if you're staying stagnant, you're moving away from your goals. Let's be honest, because time's ticking by and you're spending your energy and your time and probably your money on things that are not moving you closer to your goals. Therefore, you're moving further away from your goals. And every second that you're doing that is a waste of time. Every second that you're doing that is a waste of time. And so I think we have to sometimes overthink the choices that we're making. And I think that we can, and we have to tease out almost every choice in order to train ourselves to be able to think this way, especially when we're just starting out. So for example, who are you hanging out with? Who are you hanging out with? Who are you dating? That's, that's a heavy hitter. And that may have hit a sore spot. And if it did, I'm sorry, but also not sorry, because maybe you need to think about that. Maybe the people that you're surrounding yourself with are not good for you. Maybe they're not supportive. Maybe they are, you know, maybe they're not in a good place. And so they might be holding you back. And so you have to make a decision of whether you're in a position to support them, whether the relationship is worth it, or whether you're just sort of like stuck because it's comfortable. Or maybe you're in an amazing relationship and this is not an issue at all, but you've thought about it. You've thought about it. And this isn't just about relationships. This is about, well, this is about all kinds of relationships, friendships, familial relationships. Who is surrounding you? Who are you allowing yourself to be surrounded by? And are they supporting you? Are they supporting the choices that you're making? Or are they pressuring you to make other choices? Like, come on, come on, let's go out. Let's go out. Stop studying. Stop doing this. Oh, don't take that break. Come out with me instead. Or are they saying, yeah, yeah, you do you. Take the time that you need. Because that's what it should be if they have your best interests at heart. Take the time that you need. Take the break that you need. Take the rest that you need. I'll be here when you're ready. That's a support. That's a supportive response. Another supportive response, can I help you? Is there something that I can do that will help you get further faster? How can I support you? How can I be there for you? And sometimes that just might be sitting there being quiet. Sometimes it might be checking in with a quick phone call once a week. Sometimes it might be a quick text or a DM. Sometimes it might be giving them some space. And none of those things are bad. It's what you might need. And you have to think about that. You have to think about that. You have to think about what you need from other people, what you're giving to other people, vice versa, and what you need to be giving yourself. One thing that we see a lot is, and this actually just happened the other day in a coaching call, we were talking to one of our members who was all set up, all set up to study and do the work that they needed to do. They went to work early to be able to sit down and to be able to open their stuff and to start working. They got to work early so that they didn't have to worry about being late and they just put their headphones in and they could just work. And then as soon as they started to work, one of their colleagues came in and they said, Hey, I need to leave early. Can you take over for me? And because this person felt you know, that they had to, you know, that they, that they had to, you know, they felt bad saying no, maybe they were people pleasing a little bit or a lot bit. They said, yeah, I guess so. And the other person left to do what they needed to do. And our client ended up doing their shift and not doing the work that they needed to do. And so they brought this to our coaching call and we unpacked it and we thought about it. I think we analyzed it. Maybe we overanalyzed it. But I think that the reason that it's so important to have analyzed this is because we asked the question, okay, so you did that for this other person. They had no concept of what it is that you were working on and the importance of the documents that you were working on. They weren't being supportive of you. You had your headphones in, you had your laptop, you were all like set to go. And this person without a care in the world and without any concern for what you were doing, swooped in 
asked for your, asked for a favor from you and swooped back out. And so the thing that we analyzed here was, okay, how are you making decisions for yourself? Was this an emergency for the other person, for the colleague that left? And the answer was, I don't know if it was an emergency. If it's an emergency, okay, we can make an exception. But if it's not an emergency and the person just wants to leave early and you want you to take over their shift, it's okay to not do that because what that person, what our client was doing was actually really urgent. They were working on documents that they had to submit imminently. And in order to be agreeable, they helped this other person. Now, it's not to say, again, that you're not going to help other people. Of course you are. But you have to analyze in the moment whether helping that other person when it's not an emergency and when it's like inconsequential, like leaving half an hour early from a shift or an hour early from a shift, rather than continuing to work on your own materials for that extra hour, which was a really significant amount of time in this case, how is that circumstance playing out? And how are you making that decision? Like what is happening in the moment right before you say, yeah, sure. What's happening in the moment right before you say, yeah, sure, is you're stopping considering, you've stopped considering what your needs are. You've stopped considering how you can put yourself first and how you can advance. And you've started considering somebody else's ask for a favor without any details about whether or not this was even an emergency or whether they wanted to leave to who knows, go shopping. And so by analyzing the choices that we're making, we learn about ourselves. We learn about our boundaries. We learn about how we can put ourselves first. And by the way, putting yourself first is not selfish at all. Because if you don't put yourself first in a good way, I mean, not, you know, not in the way, you know, that, that you're putting yourself, you know, first at the expense of others. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is putting yourself First, as in taking care of yourself and what you need before you give, you know, the, you know, the proverbial oxygen mask to somebody else, you got to give oxygen to yourself to help the next person. And so that conversation that we had analyzing that decision helped our client realize, yeah, I could have just said, actually, you know, is this an emergency? Or, you know what, I'm really busy. I'm working on a deadline. I'm working, you know, I've got this really important thing that I'm working on. Can this wait like half an hour? You know, what is what is the situation here? Or, you know, maybe should you check with our manager because like they're the ones that, do, that he's the one that does the scheduling. So could you go check with him and come back? And like, if, if like this is actually necessary, then yeah, sure. Because those are all reasonable responses. We don't always need to say yes, the second that somebody requests something from us. So I think that this is a really good example of how we can analyze or overanalyze a very simple five-second conversation. Five-second conversation. Hey, can you take over my shift? Oh yeah, sure. I'll close all of the stuff that I'm doing and I'm off to work now for the next you know, six, seven hours. So really thinking at a microscopic level of all of the small decisions that you're making throughout the day, they all accumulate, they all add up to the way that you treat yourself and your goals and prioritize yourself and your goals and consider yourself and your goals. And so I hope that something here has resonated with you. I hope that you realize that this skill of overthinking will actually help you get further faster if you use it for that. If you use it in a negative way, that's what you'll attract. But if you use the skill of overthinking or overanalyzing in a positive way, and for me, this this is how my brain works. This is how my brain works. And so there's no turning it off. Like I used to feel bad. People used to tell me, oh, you're overthinking this. And it used to make me feel like shame that I was thinking too much about something, but actually it's the only reason that I am doing everything I'm doing now because I'm able to think at such a deep and detailed level about every single choice that I'm making, every single choice that I'm making, which by the way, now affects way more people than just me. So I think that as long as we're using our skills for good and not for evil, 
then there is room for analysis and there is room for growth and there is room for advancement. And there is absolutely a life beyond your wildest dreams waiting for you one choice at a time. So if this resonated with you, send me a DM on Instagram, follow us on Instagram at apply yourself global, follow us on TikTok at apply yourself global. And you, or you can send me an email, Adrian at apply yourself global.com. The links are all in the show notes. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.